Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna make a little bit of an update to some experiments that we started a while back, two setups, and actually we are going to end them. So first project is the rock wool setup that we started quite a few months ago. This one we're not gonna end completely in the sense that we will let one work it be, but one definitely we need to repot it. And the second one is the Kalomi Minerals setup, which you'll see really does need stopping. So we're gonna see how the orchids are doing and I'm gonna tell you what I disliked about these setups. And I think we should start with the rock wool. So as always, if you missed the initial videos, I will link them both down below so you see how we started, what the orchids were looking like and so on and so forth. So first of all, the rock wool. If you remember, we potted a Tulumnia orchid and an Oncidium orchid. And well, I think it's clear to see that we need to stop the experiment for the Tulumnia. The Oncidium, I was really, really tempted to stop it and just repot it, uh, but I do see some roots. So I poked around a little bit and this guy is just growing some new roots. So I will let it be for now and just see how it behaves with the rock wool. But I have to say, I was really, really tempted to just switch the setup because this is really not all that appealing to me. I don't know why. I think it's because of what we talked in the first video. You have to be very careful with rock wool. It's mineral wool. You should not inhale it or touch it. It's an irritant. Do I really want to make a greenhouse full of irritant setups? Maybe I don't. And maybe this is not as bad as the industrial one we used to isolate houses. But still, I think it's a psychological thing. This is not appealing to me. But for the sake of just seeing what happens, I'm going to let this be still. And oh boy, let's take a look at the Tulumnia. So take a look at that. It does not look good, but let's just look closer. And I'm really trying not to touch this medium. See, I shouldn't have to do this. So if we look there at the base, we can see a new growth starting, but searching for roots, well, it's going to be quite a journey because there are no really good roots. I see there are some new roots here. I don't remember if she had them. It doesn't really matter because look at that. We have no root tips, nothing of the sorts, and it has been already quite a few months. The orchid has gotten gradually more and more dehydrated. This one actually had a flower spike as well, which grew to some extent and then it just stopped. Oh no, I have a bud. I do, I have a bud here, but I cannot say it looks good. Oh no. Anyway, um, it does not look good and I do not have roots. And at this point, it is plausible to think, hey, wait, the orchid might just not grow because it's not her season to grow. So you just need to wait a little longer. Not really, I actually have a comparison. Ta-da! This is the exact same Tulumnia. Well, if we go with what the tag says, these are the two Tulumnias that I got blindly from Orchids Deluxe for my birthday almost six months ago. And that right there is what I have to show off for this setup. This is just the one that I placed in the setup, which has worked for me before. It's a net pot with some moss inside. It is sitting hanging, pretty standard type of setup. And just look at it. It looks so, so, so much better, but not only. Let's just look at the root system. Do we see roots? Yes, we do. She is growing roots. Look at those roots right there. And yes, there was a period in which these orchids didn't grow all that much. You can see I don't really have an abundance of roots. But then again, Tulumnias are not known to create an abundance of roots really, really fast. So just as the weather warmed up, the root system became more and more vigorous. But there is clearly a difference between these orchids. This one just took off and is growing and has the time of her life. The other one is just really not doing well. It's really easy to see. And even though there was a little bit of a difference between these orchids when I purchased them, it wasn't this big. This one did not look so bad. So I'm gonna put her in the same type of setup as the other one. And hopefully we are going to see this bud bloom. But for now, the whole rock wool thing, it's not my thing. As a medium, as a setup, I was hoping to get a uh, sort of sphagnum moss, but the inorganic alternative. It does not work like that. Sphagnum moss is very absorbent. This one is not. Yes, it can retain a lot of water, but it's just not so wicking. Usually the water sits mostly at the bottom. And if you look at the color difference between the layers, I think you can clearly see this one is darker colored. 
that's because it is wetter than what's on the top. On the top, things are almost pretty dry. I don't wanna touch it. I wish I could. That's one of my beefs with this medium. So it's now working as pure sphagnum moss as I expected it to. And it does still accumulate algae as well. I'll insert here some footage with the other orchid. You can see on the sides there are algae forming. So it's not like it's more algae resistant or anything of the sorts. No, rock wool gets a lot, a lot of algae if you're not careful. People have many, many issues with that and with mold because it retains a lot of water. Oh, actually, I totally, totally forgot. Yes, I have mold issues. Now it's not so apparent because this thing dried a little bit, but yesterday it was so apparent. Do you see these little dots? This and this, those two, I touched it. These are mold spots, which is just so, so weird because the top dries. But I know this type of mold. It's a mold prevalent here during this time of the year. Surfaces that are pretty dry, excuse me, no, pretty wet, they get this type of mold. And I know it's not a lot, but I do know this mold. So this medium gets algae, it molds, it's not evenly moist, it's a little sketchy if you want to touch it. Maybe you shouldn't touch it. You should wear gloves, protect your nose and everything when you work with it. Is it really worth it? For me, it's not. I'm still gonna keep the Oncidium for the sake of the experiment. This medium is typically used a lot in mixtures, not as a sole medium. It's used for Phragmopediums actually. And since I have a bag, I might use it as a mix. But for now, I think the fun is over for this Tulumnia. I really don't like how it looks like. So I will put her in a setup just like this. And I do believe that is a wrap. I will keep you up to date with the Oncidium though, but I might end it abruptly with that one as well if I'm not happy with something and I will mention it in the video. So that has been my experience with it. Let us know down below what your experience has been with this medium. If you used it, did you use it in a mix or stand alone? Are you a little creeped out by the whole it's mineral wool situation, don't touch it, or am I just a little bit overboard here. Let me know down below. I know I have a sensitivity to toxic stuff. I don't use fungicides, insecticides. I, I have my issues. I'll give you that. But this is orchid medium. You have it in front of you all the time. Sometimes I want to touch it. I want to see if it's dry and I don't really want to touch it. Sure, nothing bad will happen straight away, but you know, it's not good to touch mineral wool. That's what I'm saying. It's an irritant. Let's, let's just move on. Let me know your opinions down below on this medium. And here's the little phalaenopsis that we potted in the Kolomi mineral setup. I'm saying setup because we didn't only use their medium, their pebbles, but also their proposed setup, which consists of a glass vase or jar, their medium, and no drainage. So again, you'll have the initial video down below in the description. I said in that video that this is a high risk setup in the sense that there is a high chance this orchid will not respond well to everything that's going on. And indeed, it's really not responding all that well. I was expecting it, but first you might notice that this is full of water. So let's back up a little bit here. One of the claims that Kalomi has about their product is that it can actually soften water. Oh yes. And in my initial video, I debated a little bit because they referred in their article to the temporary hardness, not the general hardness. In the meantime, I did more research. It would appear that these pebbles are no pebbles at all. They're not marble or anything. They're actually zeolites. And if you do Google the features of zeolite, you will see that yes, they do have the capability to actually soften water. I'm a little unsure here about this capability of theirs, what exactly it means, how exactly it works, and if it's enough to actually make a difference. Because sure, they might have this capability, but if it's not enough, then it's not gonna help as much. So what I did yesterday was to fill up this little vase with tap water. I did measure the hardness of my tap water. It's not the hardest water ever, but still, I prefer to use osmosis water. So I have a reading of 260 something parts per million, if I'm not mistaken. So I filled up the vase with water, actually did leave it for an entire day. Today we're gonna measure it and see if it's softer. And don't worry, if you forget an orchid in water for a day, it's okay. Chances are the roots will be okay. If you leave it in water submerged like that for more than a day, then it becomes a little sketchy. But now I think she's okay. So let's see how we're gonna pour the water out. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna make a mess, but it's okay. Did I actually pour this or not? 
I am kind of pouring it. I just need a little bit, not all of it. So we do have enough water to measure. Let me get my TDS meter. This is the same one I used in yesterday's video. And let's just see how this water is. Oh my. If anything, it got even harder. Let me just check my phone because I actually filmed with the phone yesterday. Okay, so it actually didn't get harder. Yesterday I had 288 or something in the 80s anyway, so no, it didn't get harder, um, but it didn't get softer either. There you go, 287. So in a whole day, the minerals didn't really soften up my water. Maybe in a week or so, they would do a better job, but still, if in a day they didn't do anything, if they actually do soften the water, then I think the quantity is just negligible. So I'm not sold on the aspect that this medium can actually soften the water. I'm not saying zeolites cannot soften water, but this product at least does not do enough for me to say, oh yes, I can use my tap water, no more osmosis water. I had a weird accent there, reverse osmosis, I meant to say. So that's that with the whole hardness situation, but this is not the only reason why I want to give up the setup. Again, you'll see some footage from yesterday here. I discovered that the water at the bottom really doesn't make its way up to the top. This medium is not absorbent, nothing like leca or ceramis or moss or anything of the sorts, or even the rock wool for that matter. It behaves pretty much like any type of pebble in the sense that if it has something wet next to it, it will get wet. Indeed, it does get wet. I do believe it absorbs a little bit of water, but not as much as I was led to believe, but maybe that's just me. And because it's not absorbent, do we see what's happening here? Yes, layering. We have wet roots at the bottom, but look at that, dry roots at the top. Now, the roots of an orchid are wicks themselves. However, they're not perfect wicks. In my experience, I noticed that the higher the level of water, the more chances you will have to actually have wet roots at the top. But if the water is very, very low in your container, I noticed that some roots really don't drag the water up. And as you've seen in the video, the root was wet at the bottom, dry at the top. I don't like this for a few reasons. One, inefficient nutrient absorption. In my opinion, the more surface you have to absorb the nutrients, the better you will absorb the nutrients. If you just absorb with the tip of the root, it's not efficient in my opinion. And that was just what was happening here. Not that I fertilized this orchid, but I'm thinking in advance. Second, inefficient hydration. And it's really clear that it was inefficient. This orchid looks a little better now because it was hydrating the entire night, but the leaves are very soft. It was not getting the hydration it needed. Phalaenopsis orchids need a lot of water and a lot of nutrients for that matter in comparison to other orchids. So dehydration will show immediately. And in my opinion, the more roots you can wet, the better it will be because the orchid will absorb more water. So to end with that idea, I never considered this type of watering efficient. Reason why I wasn't really on board with the water culture orchids. I just wanted something that would provide moisture around the roots, not let the roots wick up. It's just a thing that I don't believe is efficient. Now you might think, oh wait, semi-hydro. Not really, because LECA does actually absorb water. I was counting on the LECA to deliver the water further up. Yes, maybe not all the way to the top, but definitely close, not stay here. What this medium did was sit wet at the bottom and then further up pretend it didn't even exist. So it didn't work the way I wanted it to work. And also the last, oops, I'm making a mess here. The last reason that I was expecting and the reason why I called it a high risk setup, look at this. Some roots did not adapt and it makes sense to me. First of all, this medium is a lot less airy than what they were coming from. Second of all, this root was subjected to high moisture here, no moisture here. So the velamen, being that it was not adapted to this gradual, let's say, transformation, it really reacted bad. Now there is a chance the new roots will get more adjusted to this environment, but then again, it's not an environment that I really want to have with this orchid. So at this point, I need to unpot this orchid, cut away this old root, or actually dead root, which didn't adapt, and make a decision. Do I want to keep the setup or not? I don't actually. And before we end the subject, there are many, many setups that can work. They can sustain orchids alive. 
The only difference between them is their efficiency. I wanna go for something that is a little bit more efficient, delivers more water, more moisture. I don't wanna let the orchid, let's say, work for its water, work for its nutrients. It needs to do that in nature, yes. Um, but then again, in nature, we have the natural selection aspect. The fittest survives. I'm pretty sure not all of my orchids in my grow space are the fittest. Um, I want them all to survive. I want to pamper them. I want to give them more than they would find in nature because I don't want any natural selection. So yes, there are many, many setups that can work. They will not kill your orchid. Will they be efficient, all of them? Well, I believe in degrees of efficiency. And in my opinion, this type of setup with extreme water at a level and no water at the top, mm, not efficient in my opinion. So there we have it. I'm ending this little experiment. So for those of you who tried it out, let me know down below how you guys did with this medium. For me, I will definitely use it as a top layer. It is a gorgeous looking rock, really. It's really nice as decoration, um, but using it in this way with our kids is really, really not ideal in my book. If you guys consider it's ideal, that's great. That's perfect. So with that said, let's just end it here. I need to go make some coffee. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do go ahead and watch the initial videos below if you missed them. And I hope you found this video useful. You know the drill. Like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, and other fun orchid subjects. And if you really enjoy my channel and would like to see it grow, do consider visiting our merch store. Links down below in the description. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.